Welcome to the first installment of r slash confessions, where people share stories about the many things they've done in their lives, whether good or bad. Mostly bad. As always, if you like these videos or just like my voice, please hit that like button and consider subscribing as this all really helps my channel grow and pushes me to create more videos. Now let's get started with our first story of the day, which was posted by Billy Club XXX. Cop pulled me over and I called 911 and lied to get out of going to jail. When I was 19, I was running late to work in my tiny piece of poop economy car, and on fumes of gas, I didn't come to a complete stop on a right turn. Lights behind me, so I pull over. I know I've barely got any gas at all and was almost at the gas station, hence why I rolled through the stop a little, trying not to have the car die. At that time, around 1995, a digital phone had come out called VoiceStream, now T-Mobile. And their whole big thing was the phones were digital, not cellular. They were the first phones with caller ID, and one of the big things the salesman had said over and over was since it was digital, the signal couldn't be triangulated or traced. Not that I cared, but it stuck in my mind. Well, as I give the cop my license, registration, and insurance card, I got an idea. I knew if I was late to work, I was going to lose my job. They were super strict there. So I get an idea, and right after I hand the papers to the cop, and he's walking back to his cruiser, I called 911 and tell the operator I just saw a guy with what looks like a shotgun walk into a 7-Eleven that was about two blocks away. I confirmed the address, then I hung up. After 30 seconds later, the cop comes sprinting to my car and hands me all my stuff, rushed and said, Come to a complete stop next time, then peels off to the direction of the store. I pushed my car to the gas station that I almost made it to and felt pretty pleased with my ingenuity. I was an idiot and I confess. Edit. Wow, this blew up. I forgot to mention I would have gotten arrested, booked, and released because I was driving with a suspended license for unpaid traffic tickets and I had a bench warrant for it because I'm an idiot. So it wouldn't have just been a few minutes late to work. The job was a physical high turnover one that didn't tolerate much. I don't know if I'm in the minority or the majority, but I think what OP did was genius. Our next story was posted by Baby Got Back 19. Confession. I do nothing at my new job and nobody seems to notice. Got a new job about three months ago from a competitor of my old employer. Decent pay increase as a project manager, Fortune 300. When getting hired, was told my team was getting assembled and was given some prelim work to do, but was warned it may be a week or two. Cool with me. It got me time to get acclimated. I complete the work a lot sooner than expected, and after asking my boss if there's anything to do, and being told not yet to sit on my thumbs for a few days, I'm assuming HR will be in touch with the status of the new hires. About a month goes by, and still nothing. I try to be helpful, emailing other managers asking if they needed a second eye on anything, and asking my boss, a few people under me, if they need help on any projects. Yet no long-term goal can be found, and for the most part, I essentially do nothing but play on my phone and day trade. I have my own office. I check in weekly with a member of HR, alternating between a few as to not make them angry, but hear little back. Eventually, my boss retires and the new interim guy is from another department. I'm friendly with him, but it's clear he's a bit over his head, so I figured I'd wait a few days to let him know my situation. Eventually though, he comes into my office to thank me for doing good work on the initial pre-setup I had done a month ago. After that, he essentially leaves me to my own devices. At this point, I had written close to a dozen emails to HR and even my boss's boss, but always got non-committal responses. Eventually, due to learned responses, I kind of give up and just figure someone will tell me, eventually. It's now been close to three months and outside of extremely minor and favor tasks, and my initial pre-planning, I've essentially done nothing and have not been asked what I'm doing once. I occasionally walk around the production floor with a clipboard taking notes so I'm seen, but I seriously feel like even if I didn't, no one would notice. My new boss doesn't seem to realize I'm one of his workers and essentially leaves me alone, lost in the shuffle of a huge company. A bit annoying, but I'm not complaining and I have documented proof of me trying to fix this situation. Until someone notices though, I'm happy playing words with friends and day trading while getting 35 an hour. And OP actually put an update. August 7th. 
I applied for a transfer across town and now I'm in an actual role. I'm actually fairly busy these days, but the reduced paranoia of getting caught is worth it and makes the day go by faster. Damn OP, 35 an hour just to sit there and play on your phone all day? That kinda sounds like my job, except I'm avoiding work and you just have no work. Our last story was posted by Al Bundy 758 I stole over $20,000 in a very creative way in the 90s. I worked at a fast food chain in the 90s when I was in high school. When I worked there, they were in the process of phasing out denominational gift certificates, five, 10, and $25. The way it worked was if you spent more than half of the certificate, they gave you the cash back. So if you ordered 550 worth of food and gave them one of the $10 gift cards, they gave you the 450 back in cash. My manager was in charge of destroying all existing certificates as we transitioned to a more traditional credit card looking gift card. So my manager said he shredded the certificates like he was supposed to. But one night when I was closing, I found two boxes of gift cards tucked deep in the dry storage room. They were filled with the certificates that were supposed to be shredded. So I scooped them up, brought them out to the dumpster in trash bags and threw them away. After we closed, I came back and recovered the bag and brought the certificates home. I counted them. There were $1,025. $1,010 and $505 certificates. None of them had expiration dates. Total haul was $40,000 in fast food certificates. My manager never said a word. He couldn't. He had reported them destroyed weeks earlier. Over the next three years, my girlfriend and I toured every location in our state and the next four states ordering food and getting the change. We never kept track on a spreadsheet or anything, but we got good at knowing what menu items were just about half. After the first year, we started saving the change in a shoebox and let it build up. I bought my first car for $7,800 cash from the change. And for some reason, a kitty cone was $1.05. If you gave them a $5 certificate, they gave you $3.95 back. We threw away a lot of kitty cones. Damn, I wonder how your manager felt. He was definitely planning the same thing. I hope you tucked away some of that money to invest in the dot-com boom of the early 2000s. That concludes this episode of r slash confessions. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe as this all really helps my channel grow and pushes me to create more videos. Also, I'll be posting videos every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, so make sure you turn on notifications to be notified for my next video. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.